high resolution timer. To follow along with this lesson, download the project from the top of our lesson page at zoax.net. In this lesson, we will create a high resolution timer class which we will later use to time sections of our code for optimization and for real time game programming. In order to call our timing functions, we will need to include the file windows.h. Below this, we define our timer class. The timer class uses a few windows functions to calculate time from a counter. The class has three private variables which hold the start count, the end count, and the frequency of the count. These variables are of type large integer. The large integer looks somewhat confusing, but for our purposes we will only be using the quad part of the variable. This is just a 64-bit integer. In the constructor, we call query performance frequency to store the number of counts per second in the frequency variable. The function query performance frequency gets a system-specific value of the number of counts per second for the internal counter. The functions start and end are used to fill the start and end count variables. The function query performance counter accesses the internal counter to fill the past and variable with the current count. After the start and end functions, we have a function to calculate the elapsed time in seconds. This function subtracts the end count from the start count and divides by the frequency which is given in counts per second. After this, we have three more functions to calculate the time in milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds. Below the class definition, we have a simple bubble sort function which we will be timing in our example code. In the main function, we fill an array with 10,000 random integers. After this, we declare an instance of our timer class. Next, we time our bubble sort by calling start on the timer, calling the function to sort the array, and calling end on the timer to get the final time. Finally, we output the time in seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds. Compiling and executing our program, we see that our bubble sort takes about a half a second to complete. This concludes the lesson.